Welcome the, back to Morning Joe. Yes. No, what were, were you about talk, to say? Well, we were just talking about the Boston Globe and uh, Boston the plight of American general. newspapers and the, uh, reading online as kind opposed of to books. And the Red, the Red Sox. Speaking of Boston, I guess. One. I'll try and segue. So let's go to Boston. North Shore. Uh, North Shore. Oh, wait a second. Speaking North of Boston. North Shore. Shore. Seth Walton. North, North Shore. Back Joining us from Boston, member of the House Armed Services Committee, Democratic Congressman Seth Moulton of Massachusetts. Before joining Congress, he served four tours of duty in Iraq as a Marine Corps infantry officer. Thank you. Congressman, thanks so much for being with Very us. Nice. I'll ask you the same question uh, it's good to be back. That, that I asked Senator Durbin. Does there have to be a what's next in mm -hmm. Syria? Does there have to be the next military strike? Because that's what the media and some, some politicians have been saying. Well, what's next? What's, was that strike actually enough? Well, right now we have no idea because we've received no plan whatsoever from the Trump administration. But I'll say this, if there is another strike, first of all, they have to present a plan. They have to present a plan to not only get us into Syria, but how we're going to get out. And that plan has to then be backed up by serious military and diplomatic actions. And they've got to come before Congress to get those approved. Did you, so do you oppose uh, last Thursday night's attacks? No, I think it was the right decision. And I was critical of President Obama for not taking that action a few years ago. But the question is, where do we go in Syria? Exactly. And it's very clear that if we don't have a plan, it's not fair to the American people. And most of all, it's not fair to our troops to ask them to risk their lives without any end game. So the, the president, though, has said, though, our, our strategy is not changing in Syria. Rex Tillerson has said the same. We've also said that, uh, that uh, the Russians need to understand that Assad won't be there for long. Is that uh, enough guidance for you in saying that our, our policy's not changed? We're not sending troops into Syria? Well, it's, it's, it's fine if we don't do anything more. Uh, but what we ought to talk about is what is the strategic plan for Syria. The reality is we have troops on the ground there right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure they know exactly what they're doing. When I've gone and talked to some of the troops who are fighting in Syria as a member of the Armed Services Committee, I ask them, what comes next? What are you fighting to achieve? Uh, they don't seem to know. And you know, I, look, I was in the Iraq war. I didn't agree with the Iraq war. But when I went out on patrol every night, I knew what the plan was. I knew the Iraqi government that I was supporting. And I knew that if we made that Iraqi government successful, we could eventually go home. I don't think there's any plan like that in Syria right now. And it's not fair to our troops. Mike Barnacle? So, so Congressman, let's take those two countries, Syria and Iraq. Let's take our involvement in those two countries, as well as Afghanistan. We've been at war for 16 years in Afghanistan, 14 years in Iraq. You have spent an enormous number of time in your life on the ground in Iraq. So when you go home on weekends to Salem and have town meetings on the North Shore in Massachusetts, and a parent comes up to you and asks you, I have a 19-year-old son. He's a Lance Corporal in the United States Marine Corps. He's in Iraq today. He might go to Syria tomorrow. Why is he there? What do you say? Well, it's a good question, and I do get that question a lot. And, and what, I, what I tell those parents is that as someone who fought in Iraq and who came back and now serves on the Armed Services Committee, I think it's my most solemn responsibility to make sure that whoever we send back there, they have a plan to win and to come home for good and that we don't find ourselves in this endless cycle of defeating a terrorist group, having no plan to secure the peace, and then five years later we have to send the troops back in again. It, it, is, it, it is so painful to me as a Marine Corps veteran to see so much of what we fought for in Iraq squandered because we didn't have a plan to secure the peace. And if, if you think about what happened when ISIS came in, and swept in in the wake of al-Qaeda, swept into Syria and then into western and into northern Iraq, they didn't just defeat the Iraqi army. The Iraqi army put their weapons down and went home because they'd lost faith in their government. That's a political problem in Iraq. And we don't solve political problems by just training Iraqi troops. The same applies to Afghanistan, and the same certainly applies to Syria, where we don't seem to have any political plan 
whatsoever. Willie. Congressman, it's Willie Geist. Good to have you with us this morning. I want to ask you a question, just get your take, given your experience on a question a lot of people have been uh, throwing around over the last week or so, and that is the standard for American intervention in Syria. I understand the attack that took place last Thursday night because the chemical weapons and their use was a violation of international law, of international norms. But also, Donald Trump talked about the humanitarian angle of it, the fact that he saw young children suffocating and dying, these images on TV that impacted him. But wouldn't you get that same feeling if it weren't chemical weapons from missiles being launched and hitting hospitals over the last six years inside Syria, killing children there as well, killing mothers, killing fathers, holding their children? How does uh, the American people decide? How do we know when it's appropriate for American power and military force to be used in Syria? This is one of the hardest questions that we face as the American people and certainly as Congress, uh, whose responsibility it is to ultimately make these decisions and authorize uh, any sort of intervention. Uh, now, I'm a believer that we ought to stand up for, for human rights and that if someone uses uh, chemical biological weapons, uh, that's a red line that we don't let people cross. But at the same time, you're right. I mean, there are a lot of people, tens of thousands of innocent Syrian civilians suffering irrespective of whether they're getting targeted by chemical weapons. But the bottom line is this. We have to have a plan. We can't go into a conflict that's open-ended. Uh, you know, General Powell uh, famously said, we have to have an exit strategy. And right now, I don't see an exit strategy in Syria. But having said that, I will also add this, that the Syrian conflict has created untold problems across the world. And so the thought that we can just let them fight it out, something that Donald Trump has said in the past, and it won't affect anything in the West. It won't have any effect on Europe. We won't have refugee crises that, that royal but, but, the But Congressman, that's not really their position now, is it's it? It's not fair. That's not their position well, right now. Well, it's not now, but it, it, it's not now. But I'm just, right. uh, look, I, I'm giving Willie credit to say that, you know, these are tough decisions because just leaving it alone isn't always, isn't always an easy answer. What I would like to see is a plan for Syria that talks about how we can end the civil war. Uh, General Petraeus has suggested the value of no-fly zones or safe zones. Maybe that's something that we should explore. Uh, the troops who are in there right now talk about potentially uh, s sectioning off portions of the country, like the Kurdish regions in the north. That's something that we should discuss. But whatever it is, we've got to have a clear plan, and everybody's got to be committed to it, so that when those American soldiers risk their lives every night, they know that there's a a plan to secure the peace once they're done. All, All right. right, Congressman, thank you for being with us. Despite Moulton, the fact thank you, you tried to much. give Willie credit, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it only encourages All right, him. thank you, sir. <laughs> in a few minutes, him. we'll bring in Bill, Bill Neely from Moscow on the Secretary of State's meeting this uh, morning with his Russian counterpart. Plus, White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer spoke to NBC's Peter Alexander last night after he seemingly said that Bashar al-Assad is worse than Hitler. We'll have more from no, that conversation no, no, no. when Peter joins us live from the White House. We're back in a moment. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more from Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.